Okay, so this is the Coleman mantle going by. And this is the Fiesta wear. It totally pegs it. <laughs> oh my God. So when I was a geophysicist years ago, I used to have to go through hazmat training um, because I dealt with a lot of environmental hazards. And one of the trainings I went through, we talked about radium and the radium girls. And those are the women I'm gonna talk about today, the Rosie Riveters, you don't hear much about. So we take glow in the dark things very, they're, they're, they're commonplace nowadays. But back in the day, like the turn of the century and World War II, in order to make something glow in the dark, we had to use radium. So during World War II, the airplane dials had to glow in the dark while our men were flying in the air. And in order to make those dials glow in the dark, we had to use radium paint to paint the numbers and the tick marks on the dials. I did this job one time, I was closing a military base, and somebody had buried some of these dials out in a field back in the day before EPA and all those um, environmental protection agencies were around. And they buried it out in this field, and a 90-year-old man told us that they were out there. And so it was my job to go find them. And why did we have to find those dials? Not only was it trash, but they were glow-in-the-dark dials that went on the planes back in World War II, meaning they were painted with radium, meaning they were radioactive. So in order to get those fine lines the tick marks on those dials, you would have to take a paintbrush, dip it into the paint, and paint these fine lines. And then what these women would do is lick the paintbrush to give it that fine point, dip it in the paint, and then draw the line. And they do this over and over again. Well, it came to be that this was not a good idea. So you think to yourself, why did these women do that? Didn't they know better? No, they didn't. And not only did they not know better, but they were told by the factories to do this. They wanted them to take the, the brushes onto their lips and get that fine point as best as they could. And this started back in the 20s and 30s, right after Madame Curie discovered radium. It started a whole new industry glow-in-the-dark watches, dials, all sorts of things. This one is a radium pull chain for your lantern. That was in uh, 1905. And a little side note, that orange Fiesta wear that was your mom's or your grandma's from years back, well, the paint they used to use with that was made out of uranium. And you could put a Geiger counter on one of those plates and it would go off. No kidding. So this is actually being used. So what is... <laughs> Fiesta wear. <laughs> Fiesta wear. I told you Fiesta wear. Let's see. Let's see. That's pretty hot. Okay, look at that pegged out. Okay, so when I was going through hazmat training back in the day, they used to tell, they told us that the older Fiesta wear was radioactive. And this is old Fiesta wear, if you're not familiar with it, it's the, the old kind of Hispanic looking. Now watch when it goes by the Gaga counter. Okay, well this is even scarier. These are the old mantles off a of Coleman lantern. 
Are they? Yes, they are. I can't tell you how many times those have crumbled in my hand uh, over the years. Okay, so now the Fiesta wear is going through. That totally pegs it out. And now the old mantles from a Coleman lantern is not as strong. But it's, but it's pretty dang high. Oh. But yeah, if you've got old Fiesta wear that was handed down to you, um, you know, you need to be careful. So, or if you bought it in an antique store. So, this is some food that is has naturally occurring radiation. So, uh, salt substitute, uh, cow bone, um, Brazilian nuts are really high. It says Brazilian nuts are the world's most radioactive food. Um, they have a high radium concentration. Um, some have as much as a thousand times more radium than the average food. Brazilian nuts. Those are in their shells. Um, kitty litter. Um, is that because of the bentonite? Most kitty litter is made from clay, that, which is bentonite. Uh, from clay that acts as an absorbent. Since clay typically contains elevated levels of naturally occurring um, radionuclide, um, large amounts of kitty litter can be measurably radioactive. Taster's choice, baby. Taster's choice, instant coffee. Think about that when you make Kahlua. Using radiant heat, canned milk. Oh my God! <laughs> and that is an awesome. Fishing problem. lures from 1930s to 19, uh, 1920s to 1930s. Sensodyne toothpaste uses potassium nitrate. It works. Check it it out. works by calming the nerves of the tooth, which prevent the transmitting of painful stimuli. And then Fiesta Wear, of course, is, I knew about that. Radiated glass. I think they did it intentionally. Well, it was the color. They were going for the color. Um, so for the red, they used uranium oxide yeah. in the glaze. Yeah. So in Moab, you could buy uranium jewelry <laughs> back in the day. I think they actually have it in the gift shop here. Um, so, Moab, Moab Uranium Necklace, the uranium capital of the world, I did not know that about Mo, uh, Moab, was home of some of the most famous uranium mines in the United States. Visitors could take home souvenir jewelry fashion um, from small pieces of uranium. Wow. You also need to be careful on what is called Vaseline glass. It's also known as Carney glass because during the depression, it was a prize that you could win from throwing a coin onto it at a carnival. They still have many of those games today. Carney glass contains a small amount of uranium. This gives the glass its yellow green color. It also makes the glass glow bright green under a black light. So what happened to the radium girls? These women ingested quite a bit of radium and radium acts similar to calcium. So the radium that workers ingested was deposited into their bones. Many of these workers developed bone cancer, usually in their jaws. The Radium Girls worked for the U.S. Radium Corporation. This corporation extracted and purified radium and made it into paint. The factory was located at the intersection of High and Alden Street in Orange, New Jersey and more than a hundred women worked at the factory at that time.
One of the first to die was Molly Magia. There were seven sisters in her family, and four of them worked for U.S. Radium Corporation. Molly died in 1922 at the age of 24, and several causes were blamed for her death, but none of them was radium at the time. Before her death, Molly's jaw was removed after it began to break away, and she developed anemia, and her mouth would not stop bleeding. By 1927, more than 50 other women suffered similar fates. Eventually, it was determined that the cause was the repeated exposure to ingesting radium. In 1927, five dial painters filed a lawsuit against the corporation. They exhumed Molly five years after her death. They autopsied her body, which was well preserved after five years, and found that each and every portion of tissue and bone tested radioactive. The women went through a lengthy legal process, including numerous appeals, and it was finally settled in 1928. Each of them were awarded $10,000, and in addition to $600 per year for life. Other lawsuits ensued. The other was in Illinois, where the same company had a factory there. These women also won their suit due to Molly's postpartum sacrifice. And in the first time in U.S. history, that an employer was found negligent and required to pay settlement to its workers. Ironically, radium was discovered by a woman, Madame Curie. I'm sure you've heard of her. And Madame Curie, she died herself of radioactive poisoning from the radium she used to carry around in her pocket. If you'd like to learn more about the Radium Girls, there's a wonderful book called The Radium Girls, and I've put a link down in the description to that very book. And remember, the links in the description help support this channel. There's also a wonderful movie that came out in 2020 called The Radium Girls also, and how one woman got sick from the radium and how she fought the company that gave her this illness. So make sure you check that out. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And remember the links down in the description, they help support this channel. And make sure you click on one of the tiles to my side to see some more from Colorado Martini.